Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, the last little bit, I've been uh, kind of kicking around a couple of different video ideas uh, based on some projects. Uh, one of them that I've put together and another one that I found recently that I like, but I don't really know that either one of them kind of warrants their own video. They're just small little things uh, that I think might, might make your life a little easier. I could be wrong, but uh, that's what I'm gonna let you decide after you have watched this video. Um, so basically the first thing that we're going to take a look at is a script that I, I kind of, I found online, but then modified to fit my needs, uh, that basically will allow us to install, uh, sudo curl, uh, docker and docker compose with just a couple of quick commands, uh, rather than, you know, going through a process of, you know, installing or doing updates and then installing this and then adding keys to that and then installing this other thing and then going over here and grabbing this and then downloading. And it just, sometimes getting Docker and Docker Compose installed can be more complicated than necessary. And I'm sure that my solution here that I'm gonna show isn't the most efficient, but it's something that I found that works that I've actually started implementing in my own workflows. Um, and I've even simplified it farther by putting it on GitHub to make it even easier for everybody. So let's take a look at how I'm going to start installing Docker on my new hardware and containers and VMs and that sort of thing going forward. Uh, and of course, I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this down in the comment section down below. So here we are on my desktop and basically, uh, and again, this will be linked in the description, but basically the way this works is um, there are a couple of different files in here and you can run either one, depending on what your needs are. The first one uses root and sudo uh, to, to run the commands and that sort of thing. I know that not everybody likes to do that. So uh, I made a different version of the same thing with no root, no sudo, none of that kind of stuff uh, in case you're using something like Ubuntu and you don't have root or you don't, you don't have sudo or whatever, you don't want to install sudo for security reasons, there are two different versions of this file available. You can pick and choose which one you want to use. Um, and if we take a look, uh, they're more or less the same. But if we look here, let's zoom in just a little bit, um, and it's all listed out. And what I think is fairly human readable, but if you're not comfortable with, with trying to digest what all of this stuff means, uh, we can come back over here. We're going to leave it zoomed in. Screw it. Uh, we're going to scroll down. And if we take a look down here, basically it takes each section of that bash script and breaks it down and explains what each line does so that you don't have to you know, necessarily worry about um, kind of what's going on. Of course, uh, I encourage you to dig through this and 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 make sure that you trust everything that's in there. So if you, if you just want to read through kind of the bash script explained section of this page. It's down there at the bottom. Again, everything will be linked in the description down below. And again, like I said, there's a, a just a basic and then there's also one with no root. So you can use either of those files for your install needs. So here we are in my uh, Proxmox virtual environment setup on version 8.1.3. Um, and, and we're going to create a new container here. Um, you, this will work with a VM or bare metal or whatever, but just for simplicity, um, I'm gonna do uh, a container. So I'm gonna come up to the top right, click create container. Uh, I'm gonna put in my password and give it a, a host name. We're gonna say docker tut. Um, and then all of this other stuff looks fine. We're just gonna kind of blow through some of this. Uh, I'm gonna use Debian 12 because I can, it's new, it's there. Uh, my disk, of course, you can give it whatever size you want here. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at eight gigs. Again, this is just a tutorial. So um, one core, uh, 512 megs of RAM, our network. Uh, I actually wanna change this to VMBRO. Uh, this other option that I've got in here is um, a, a kind of a VLAN feature that Proxmox has enabled um, uh, it, or has, has added to their newest version of Proxmox. I'll probably do a video on that soon, but uh, if I don't do this, it's gonna give me a weird IP address and I won't be able to do anything with it. So I wanna make sure that my bridge is, connect, is correct there. Switch that to DHCP, DNS, fine, confirm, start after created and finish. So all we're doing uh, with that process is just deploying a new Proxmox container uh, with uh, a Debian 12 base. There's nothing else installed on the system. It's just a fresh install of Debian 12 in a Proxmox container. But we're going to add some stuff to it very quickly and easily to make this a useful container for a Docker setup. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we are. It says it is done. We're or task okay, which tells us it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and click close. Um, and then Docker test is 111 right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. And uh, let's clear the screen. Um, so if I do something like uh, curl command not found, uh, sudo command not found, uh, docker command not found, um, 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 what else? Um, Anyway, no, we'll also get command not found. Now the script that we're going to install will, will take care of most of that for us, but 
we need to have git installed so that we can clone the repository to install everything. So the first thing we actually need to do here is install git to our new container. So to do that, we're just going to do uh, apt install git. And then we'll just say yes or hit enter. Either of those will work. And there we go. So now we have git installed. So if I just do git uh, there, Otherwise, it, it said, hey, not we don't recognize this command. Well, now it does. It's just like, hey, you didn't finish the command. So clear the screen. We're going to jump back over here to my Docker Compose or my Docker install script over here. Basically, we're just going to do a git clone of the repository. We're going to paste that in and hit enter. Just like that. Now we can CD uh, into that Docker install folder, and then let's just do an ls uh, dash a. So we've got a dot get file, a readme.md file, a docker install dot sh file, and a docker install no root dot sh file. Now I want to use just the docker install, but either of these will work. Now I just want to use the, the just a regular docker install file that's got root and sudo and all of that kind of stuff, uh, because I'm a glutton for punishment and don't care about security. Um, of course, I could, again, I could use either file there, but this is just what we're going to take care of. Uh, this is just what we're going to use to do this process. Process. So the first thing we need to do is actually make that file executable. And to make that file executable, we're just going to do a chmod like so. And we do space plus, oops, plus X for executable. And then we're just going to do uh, docker install dot sh. Again, I could do the no root option if I wanted to do that, but I'm not going to. So now I've, I've given that file executable permissions. So now I can just do dot dash docker install dot sh and hit enter. Now, depending on the hardware or the specs that you've given your, your container, your VM, your virtualized environment, this may take a couple of minutes to complete. Uh, but once it's done, uh, it will actually let you know, and then we can move on from there. So it's gone ahead and it's got the first part of this setup done, actually probably the second part uh, where it's, it's well, now it's done. So <laughs> let's just talk about this, right? Earlier, I had mentioned that to get Docker installed, there's usually a lot of extra steps that you have to go through. Uh, luckily, uh, this handles all of those different steps for us in this script. Uh, once it is done, it will say, hey, our client is Docker Engine Community. Here's our version. Here's our API version. Here's all of the different stuff you need to know about your Docker install. Um, and of course, there's more information about to run Docker as a non-privileged user, consider doing this. Um, and it says, hey, Docker has been installed successfully, waiting for Docker to start. And then it's gone ahead and then also installed uh, Docker Compose and given us the version of Docker Compose that we have installed. So let's go ahead and clear our screen like so. We're gonna say uh, Docker PS and there we go. So now Docker is up and running. So I dig that. Uh, we can also say, you know, like curl um, is, Earlier when we when we typed in curl, it said command not found. Now it's like, hey, you didn't finish the command curl what? So with just a couple of, of quick commands, cloning the repository, uh, navigating into the repository folder, uh, makes, making one of those files executable and then executing that file, now we've gone ahead and installed everything we need to have Docker, Docker Compose, uh, sudo, curl, and get installed in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and it would actually be even faster if I wasn't explaining along the way. So there's how easily you can now install all of those different things on your setup uh, with just a couple of quick, simple commands. Again, everything will be linked in the video description, and I would love to know uh, what your thoughts are on this method. If you've got a different method that you like to use, of course, let me know all of that uh, in the comment section uh, here on this video. So now that we've taken a look at the Docker install portion of things, the next thing I want to show is kind of a cool little dashboard landing page kind of thing. Um, the caveat to this is you may not get 100% accurate information uh, on a Proxmox container. Uh, I think you might get better results on a VM or of course bare metal. Um, also, I've had issues getting this to work on my Synology device back there. Um, so you may want, you, if you want to install this on a, on a NAS, you may have to hit up their GitHub repository uh, to get more information about the requirements for that. Uh, we're just going to take a look at installing this uh, in, 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 a, in a Proxmox container on Debian 11 with Docker installed. So here we are uh, back on my dash or on my dashboard. I, I read dash there on my desktop, looking at dash dots website at get dash dot dot com. Um, of course, you can go to documentation and demo. Um, or we can just take a look at this image right here uh, where there'll be a little uh, link up to their GitHub repository. You can toggle light mode and dark mode. It'll give you information about your operating system, the architecture and how long it's been up, uh, information about your processor, your storage, your memory and your network. Also, this app is responsive in the browser. So if you're opening this on your phone or your desktop or your tablet or whatever, it'll all lay out really nicely. And I really dig that they went, uh, went ahead and did that. So well done on them. Let's actually get this installed. Okay, so here we are back on the Dash.website. I'm gonna zoom in 
in just a little bit here because I want to talk about uh, this command line. Um, basically, it says uh, Docker container run uh, with a dash IAT. We're going to put it on port 80 in the browser. You can change that 80 to something else if you've got port 80 uh, set up for, for a different container or you need it for a reverse proxy or whatever. You can change the 80 there to something that you're not currently using. Uh, we're going to mount this at the root of, of the system. We're going to run this as, oh, and it's going to be uh, read only. There's going to be no write permissions with this, just, just so that we know that there's that. Uh, also, this is going to run privileged. Um, we also need to um, add one, two, two more things. I want to add a dash D up here after the run uh, so that it isn't, so that the container isn't dependent on the, uh, the, the console window, the terminal window, whatever being open. We're going to add a dash D to that. And then I also want to add a, a restart policy to this so that if your system reboots, um, it, it will automatically come back up. So this is the base. We're going to add some stuff to it. Okay, so what I've done is I've, I've just kind of got these side by side so that you can see I've added the dash D up here again to make sure that it isn't dependent, that the, the, the container isn't dependent on the, the terminal window being open. So you can close that if you need to. And then also we've added a restart unless stopped down here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab all of that, copy of that, jump back over to our uh, Docker install tut uh, thing that we just did a minute ago. And I'm gonna paste it in. I don't know why that looks all wonky in, in the terminal window up there, but it does. Um, hopefully it still works. It should be fine. But if not, we'll do it again. OK, so there we go. Just a couple of minutes later, we're good to go. What I want to do is grab the IP address of this. We're on 223. So we're going to go ahead and grab this and click copy and come over to here and paste and hit enter. Give it a second. Hey, there, it just took it a second. Ah, uh, that was weird. Anyway, so again, we've got uh, a link over to their GitHub repository. So link that will be in the description as well. Dark mode, light mode, awful, but I get it. Uh, dash dot, our OS is Debian, our architecture is x86, our uptime. Again, this is where some of the, the little nuances of this doesn't don't necessarily work on, on uh, uh, on a container or something like that that is that is in a, a hypervisor. I think you again may have better luck on on a, maybe a, a virtual machine or bare metal, um, but you can still kind of get an idea of what's going on anyway. Uh, here's our processor. Again, we can toggle this from, from just showing a kind of a consolidated look to uh, breaking out each of the cores. Uh, again, uh, our, our system has a 500 gig hard drive in it, which is accurate, but I don't know where it's getting this because our container has only got eight gigs. Uh, our memory is there and then our network. And I think this is uh, due to the maybe the new networking available in Proxmox, but but at least it gives you an idea of what your your uh, hardware is, uh, both or your your operating system and your your processor and this kind of stuff. It may not always be 100% accurate. Again, running this nested inside of a, a Proxmox container, but I think again you'll have better luck if you've got this on bare metal or something like that. But uh, I still enjoy the aesthetic. I kind of dig uh, having that there in case you can't remember what the specific hardware you're running a container or a VM or something on. You can just pop this up real quick and just have a little dashboard to go back and remind yourself uh, what you've got. So that's it. Those are, those are the couple of things I wanted to share uh, in this video. Uh, first, obviously getting Docker installed very quickly and easily with Docker compose and curl and Git and, and sudo and all of that kind of stuff. And of course, dash dot. Um, and, and I just wanted to share those with you guys. So uh, definitely let me know what your thoughts are uh, in the comment section here on the video. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So uh, thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.